shit, isn't it? I'm supposed to have a little cat. Hey, we always run out of And we're back between two edits with John Mitchell. How are you doing, sir? Good to see you again, Lee. There's been too long. You know there's another John Mitchell in the world. Yeah, he was uh, Underwater Lights USA, wasn't he? Yes! Yeah, I used to get his orders all the time. It was, uh, it was, well, I could have cashed in, I suppose, but I was too honest for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, John, this is your, well, you're not doppelganger in any sense, of, in any way, shape or form. <laughs> I know, it, we didn't confuse people in person. That was never an issue. He was very, very different, much cooler than me. So, John, if you're watching this, I'm the British version. <laughs> You know what? You're quite right. John John was a marine. He's a, 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 he goes fishing all the time. He's always drinking beer. And you're the complete He's opposite. opposite. <laughs> I really am, yeah. And I'm British as well, so it just gets yeah. worse and worse. Oh, God damn. So, I have three theories on how people get into the industry, to this industry. I love this. I love it. Yeah, I've got my concepts as well. The crew? Yep. They were ex-military or navy. Okay. Yeah. Or they worked for the Euro Report. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the Euro Report has been uh, behind many a great addition to this industry. Uh, I think you know. Great and bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, okay. Yeah. I'm bad. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what can I say? I mean, as Martin, as a leader in the industry now, I mean, I think that is just testament to what he's produced, just what we see around us today. I, I, I think you're absolutely right. I would add a fourth one. I think cruise as well. I think cruise has added a lot to the industry. Cruise shipping? Yeah, cruise shipping, yeah. Really? Absolutely. Well, because if you think about the yachts getting bigger and bigger, you can yeah, either come actually. from naval or you can come from merchant. Oh, damn it, so that's four. There's four, yeah. th four ways into the I'm sure there's more, but it always seems like <laughs> you can distill it down. But I'll tell you what I think is um, quite interesting. I don't know if you've noticed this, is um, the number of people when we started kind of fell into the industry. Like, literally fell. I had no idea about super yachting, so I started at Yacht Report. Yeah. And I was into media and marketing and all that, and I've stayed in super yachting. Now, the people that I work with, they seek it out because they want to work in super yachting. That, that's their goal. And if you talk to people now, they go, if I was 21, I would be on this like a shot. That's an interesting turn, isn't it? It it's really because, is. I think it's because as the industry is starting to get bigger and we're starting to get more recognised, you, you realise that this boat show, okay? Yep. This is the largest boat show in the world. I know. Doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. Does it not? Doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. Doesn't need a Wikipedia page. It doesn't need the donations. <laughs> There are people who have Wikipedia pages who do not deserve <laughs> Wikipedia pages. Well, maybe that's exactly why they have them. So, <laughs> Blimey. so what are you doing now? Because you're, you're, you're a genius at the, uh, the, the coding, the right? the fingers, yes. I have lots of fingers and lots of pies. Um, I, well, digital marketing was where I really uh, kind of... And you're really at the game. Hell, my God. Actually, you're ahead of the game. You, were, you did this 20 odd years ago. Not that's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was about 15 years ago that we were, 15, uh, we started. Okay. Yeah, and the uh, the Europe port kind of emerged from uh, from from nowhere to have a nice nice semblance of digital portfolios or digital website portfolios. Website portfolios. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I've been doing it 15 years, and uh, I'm now working for a fintech company, uh, helping them with their marketing. So, fintech. Fintech. So financial technology. Um, it's a uh, huge, okay. huge growth segment in, uh, yeah, well, in, in the emerging markets, not the territorial geographic. What on earth are you doing at a boat show? Um, well, because funnily enough, what they actually produce is um, something that is very, very uh, appropriate for the yachting industry from owner, charter guest, business and industry, crew, every facet uh, of what this company produces. It's called Blink Pay. Uh, and basically they facilitate uh, anything through FX uh, or through payments, but hedged on gold. Their, their USB is basically bringing hedged gold. Hedged on gold? Hedged on gold. So instead of having so these great big bullion bars which they facilitate access to and bring out in Switzerland, you can't put those in your pocket. You can't walk down the street these days and pay for anything. They've used modern technology to basically take your Blink card and at the point of transaction, pay for anything, anywhere in the world, with gold, and at that point of transaction, it's converted to local currency at the best market rates, 
for the vendor. Or, if you wanted, just buy gold on the app and just save a pot of gold that you can use for a rainy day. This is almost like Bitcoin, but it's real. Exactly. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, at the end of the day, we, we all know about Bitcoin, uh, its position in the market. Um, it's, it's, uh, well, it's very complex, even for me, my, my limited knowledge of technology and digital. Um, but what they've tried to do is, is create, effectively, I think it's right, an asset class as well as a payment system. Whereas what we have is the asset class already. It's, it's, been, it's been in existence for thousands Where of years. Where is all this gold? Because America hasn't got it. Well, it's got some of it, um, but it's all in Switzerland. The, the gold that we use is in Switzerland, but we know we're talking to vaults at the time. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's real, it's physical. We no, just give you access to it. This is actually how um, currency actually started back in the day. It was so, like, you give me right. you, the things of value and I'll give you a piece of paper saying, I'm holding this and yep. I, owe the, I owe the bearer whatever it is the value of. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just got... <laughs> it's in here. Oh, I'm sorry. You want an interview? Oh, my God. I'm, not, I, I'm so it's sorry. It's all your photo bombing right now. <laughs> oh, my God. I, will, I just wanted to say hi you. because I haven't seen him. I'm sorry. No, no, no. We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk in a bit, yeah? Yes, of course. I'm sorry, guys. No, don't worry. Very You've scared. added to it. Yeah. You can improvise again. Make it happen. Make it happen. And actually, um, talking with Jessica's background is mining as well, so she knows all about gold. Mining just, gold? Well, she's done lots of different mining. She's Colombian and Canadian, so she, uh, she's worked in the mining industry a lot. Freaking hell, I wasn't, get, I wasn't expecting to get into this today. I know, I'm sorry. Well, you asked. Well, no, it's fantastic. I mean, this is what, one of the genuine things I love about doing Between Two Gadgets and love doing it at the Bocha. <laughs> everyone's industry and everyone's specialist knowledge is so diverse. No, no, I think you're absolutely right. And I mean, just look at your family's history and uh, the companies oh. that you work with. <laughs> No, but if you, no. there's, two, there's two things we don't talk about on the show. So one's lighting, one's politics. Okay. <laughs> right, well, as an aside, as a very generalisation, uh, you know, if you look at the way the way your family kind of, I don't know, they're still in the industry. You still, no. you're no longer in. No, we are. Uh, but the whole, we the, whole the whole the whole element of, of of what you were doing was cutting edge, and the amount of yeah. companies you see in the industry in their own spheres is all cutting edge. Uh, I think it's fantastic and it's just part of it because it really kind of tests the limits. It's amazing how gold can still be used in a modern way. It seems so antiquated, so... Well, it is, it's just so fit, but it's real. It's real. And in this day and age where, you know, a $10 or a £10 note actually has nothing really backing it up, this... And not just that, it's the inflation. So if you think about it, your cash is doing that through the time. And... Okay, so... And gold has... It's, it's volatile. Yeah, it's not without risk. But comparatively, it's been doing that for millennia. But because cash is doing that, it looks like gold is doing that. So what do you do? You're creating the platform for it to be traded on? Uh, so the founders, uh, Jason Cousins and, and Ben Davies, uh, who are hugely intelligent guys, um, they've created that technology. So uh, we were talking about the Bitcoin before um, and, and other companies. Having all that technology just built in house means they're actually a lot uh, more dynamic and able to kind of launch in the US and in UK and Europe, which we did earlier this year. Um, that's why we're over here now. So we, we, we're just very, very flexible and just quick, easy and to And so is it like a buy-in? So you have to buy like a million bucks of gold? No, or... all you have to do is just uh, download the app. Um, obviously different apps for different regions because of the different regulations. So the US app is slightly different from, uh, from the UK and European app. But effectively, you download the app, and you can either buy dollars worth of gold or pounds worth. Or is it anonymous or is it? How do you mean, sorry? So like Bitcoin, you have no idea. Oh right, so yeah, there's no uh, there's no underlying blockchain technology behind it. It's it's literally um, just a direct asset. I shouldn't call it an asset. It's a currency. It's a direct currency you're just buying. But unlike the banks, where if you keep your money in a bank, they owe you. You're actually leasing it to them. You don't actually own your money anymore. The gold you actually own. So going back to your point about why we're here, um, the crew's a perfect example. If, if they hold their money in gold, so not only are they saving their money, their hard-earned cash. Because it's an asset appreciating. And it's you know, so it's a currency that effectively appreciates, not without risk, I have to carry yeah. it myself. Um, but it is the safest market. Effectively, yeah. I mean, historically, so absolutely, yeah. Well, ten thousand dollars in got uh, ten thousand dollars in nineteen ninety seven, three hundred 
true inflation is worth six and a half thousand dollars today, that same value, $10,000 in 1997 in gold, is worth over $30,000 today. So it, it speaks for itself. Yeah. That's not gold increasing in value, that's cash going down in value. God almighty. So this is what you're doing. Okay, so let's just quickly get back to um, your report. So you were there for how long? <laughs> uh, <coughs> 10 years. <laughs> you were a 10 year too? Uh, just under, I didn't get my donuts. So you and Gates are like... I didn't get my donuts. What's the donuts? So um, the Martin's donuts? gonna hate me for saying this. But we had this uh, joke, you know, the old, the old crew. When David hit 10 years, um, <laughs> Martin's gonna kill me. When <laughs> Nicholas said, sent, sent, mes sent a message to Martin saying, you realize today's David's 10, 10 year anniversary. And he came back, to the, uh, came back to the office with lots of Dunkin' Donuts. And uh, we loved they, uh, it, we loved it. But, uh, but obviously he got more than that, but be that became the symbol of your 10 year anniversary. Um, you know, he, Martin forgot and he went out and No, 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 he, it was just, he was doing a nice thing, it's not that he forgot, but... He did forget. But he just, that was the symbol he, of no, his senior anniversary. One of Martin's many assistants didn't remind him of one of the jobs he had to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I've never known anybody with so many assistants. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Nicola wants to call an assistant, but, uh, yeah. No, she was in charge. Anyway, so, yeah. so from there you went to... Uh, so, the, yeah, I started consulting, um, and I consulted... And you got out of your report simply because... 10 years, it's time to... I just didn't like donuts. <laughs> just as simple as that. <laughs> I was afraid of this. I was afraid of having a donut. Uh, I mean, my body speaks for itself. It's a temple. Um, I wish. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, I, after the art report, I, um, I I moved into kind of consulting, consulting for Burgess. Uh, and then after six months, they were very generous and offered me a role there. Um, and then three years after, I uh, moved to campus. Um, had, a, had a blast there, fantastic. I mean, it's a fantastic team of both Burgess and Campers. Lovely, lovely people. Um, What's the main difference between the two companies? Um, from your perspective? It's, it's, it's really the setup. So at, at Burgess, you have uh, this big, strong team in town because everyone's employed. And at Campers, you have basically independent brokers working for the brand. But at the same time, you just have two fantastic brands that. Yeah. operate very successfully in the industry. In their own rights. Yeah, I mean, it's, at, at the end of the day, what you're doing day to day um, is a very personal affair. You know, it's directly with your clients, so it's really, um, I think, on each broker to have that direct client relationship. And as a marketer, I'm just there to try and facilitate that and to give them the client, the confidence in the broker and the brand. Mm. I mean, it's so personal, so personal. And any, any of the brokers will tell you that. So after campus then? Uh, you campus? got out of the industry? No, 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 after campus I went to, um, went to Porto Montenegro. So I spent six months... How long has it been since I've seen you then? It's been a while. This is like decades <laughs> worth of... <laughs> yeah, and then I had a family and yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. married, kids. Married kids. Grey uh, hair. Grey hair. I must say, you're looking Heart less problem. like Frodo nowadays though. <laughs> More like Tom Cruise again? Yeah, yes. <laughs> It's, oh yeah! <laughs> I wish. No. Um, yeah, a lot's happened. A lot's yeah. happened. It's amazing though. Is, is, you weren't allowed to go to many shows, were you? Yeah, I did. Uh, I, I did a good ten years ago. I think the only times I missed for Alderdale, uh, there was. I can't remember. There was one year that I didn't go, and then the only other year I didn't go was because of Katrina. And that was when oh, Martin okay. and Alex came out, just to, you know, show because, her face. Yeah, because they all had to come out. Oh, where's Alex? I've no idea. Last time I spoke to her, she, which was about three or four years ago, it was when my boy was about a year old. Uh, she had three children. Three? Yeah. Three, of three out of them? Yeah. Wow. Uh, wow, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but yeah, so having, having always been kind of against kids, she uh, was a changed woman. No, yeah, so I think what's interesting is, because our generation, you're touching 40, 40 now. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we all knew each other back in our mid-twenties, and it wasn't very... I would like to look back on those years as my adolescence and as my, um, my stupid days. I think everybody, we all, yeah, you know, like you say, in your late teens and mid twenties, yeah. we all go through that transition of becoming mature, <laughs> sensible gentlemen of leisure. Yeah. But it's going to be interesting in another 10, 15 years where our generation is going to be within the industry. Because the, the old boys are getting old and moving on. Yeah. 
and it's going to be us that are taking, filling their shoes. It's scary. People actually might look up to us. Yeah, we're in the middle now, so we're looking up and down, <laughs> and then we'll be up. Uh, John, pleasure to see you, sir. Thank you very much. I'd love to see you. You too. In this perfect Florida morning.